This is an announcement video for a very interesting playlist that I'm starting, which is called Production Grade Go From Scratch. And in this video, we are going to talk about what are the things that you can expect from this series and who is this for and what are all the things that we are going to do in this series in different different videos. So let's jump in. The idea is we are going to start from scratch. We are going to learn the basics of Go and go through a series of steps until we are building real life projects, production grade projects, and we will deploy it in different cloud service providers, etc. So that is basically the one line explanation of what we are going to do in this whole series. Before I dive in, just a note for the people who are already watching the previous series uh, back end from first principles. So this is the series that is already in progress back end from first principles right as i already mentioned in this series we are talking about the different concepts that exist in the backend world all the theory behind it without involving any kind of code it is language agnostic and if you have watched the roadmap then you will know what are all the different different concepts that we are going to cover in this playlist this playlist is completely independent and in the initial video of this playlist, I had mentioned that there are going to be two more playlists which are going to be backend from first principles using node and backend from first principles using go. Right? There are going to be two more playlists which are going to complement this concept based playlist. So in these two playlists, we are going to explore these concepts in code using node and again using golang right the same thing back and from first principles apart from that this playlist that that i am announcing today this is called production grade go from scratch so the idea is this playlist is completely independent from these above three. Of course, if you are already watching back and from first principles, all the concepts behind it, or if you are planning to watch it, then that's very good. You will get a more thorough and more deep understanding of all the implementation specific things that you are going to do in this playlist. But even if you don't, the idea of this playlist is we are going to learn go in the fastest way possible right until you are producing production grade code until you are deploying you are building and you are shipping servers as fast as possible we are not going to go too deep into any of the concepts the only goal of this playlist is to write code ship and deploy just building things and how is this playlist different from this playlist right the backend from first principles in go in this one the backend from first principles in Go, we are going to dive deep into different backend concepts using Go. For example, uh, we have explored routing or serialization and deserialization in backend from first principles concepts base. So what we are going to do in this Go video is we are going to see how routing works in Golang using standard libraries or how Go does serialization and deserialization using the standard library package uh, JSON. We are going to see the code in this and dive deep and discuss different things surrounding it but in this one production grade go from scratch we are not focusing on standard library concepts or understanding how things work behind the scenes we're not going to do that we'll take the whatever tool that is the best in the market whatever tool that makes you the most productive and we are going to focus on building things and actually shipping things of course that does not mean that we are not going to cover concepts of go itself we are going to do that it's just we are not going to go deep into backend concept we are only focusing on go in this playlist now what can you expect from this series and before i get into that let me give you the context i work as a backend engineer uh, mostly with typescript and node.js and golang so when i started learning go a few years back i explored all the resources that is available in the market went through different youtube videos different playlists explored udemy courses read different different books on golang and of course i read the official golang documentations multiple times and the standard library code, what are the best practices, etc., etc. It took a long time. It took a more than a year to get a little confident in Go 
to start building servers or start writing code that actually does useful stuff and now i realize i could have learned it faster if i did things in a different sequence so that's the idea i want to take the optimal sequence of learning go so that it is the fastest way to learn go to write good code in go and also understand all the concepts behind it and the best practices, the industry standards, etc, etc. We are not going to cut corners in any of the things, yet we are going to do it much faster than any of the traditional ways of learning. That's the whole idea. Okay, so that's what you can expect from this series. And here are the three things that we are going to do in this whole series on a very high level. Of course, there are multiple things that are going to come under each of these steps. But this is the whole idea. The first thing is we are going to we are going to explore everything there is about Go from the official Golang docs. We are not going to go to any other resource. I am not going to come up with my own way of teaching. We are not going to do that. The people from Go team have created a lot of useful resources. Uh, for example, the tour of Go, effective Go and the Go uh, language specs and Go with examples. There are a lot of good resources and resources which are enough to get you started and to get you write good code in Go. So we'll keep the scope under that only. We are going to learn Go the way we are supposed to learn Go from the official docs. That's the first thing that we are going to do. This is the Golang official documentation. So we are just going to install go and start exploring all the things that we need to know to get us started with working with go from the official docs right that's the first thing and that's what you are going to start with and now the second thing and i think this is the most important part of this series which is reading good code right reading good go code that the other people have written over the years all the industry practices all the best practices that already exist in github right we are going to go there and explore different popular golang projects and we are going to go deep into the code we are going to read it we are going to understand how they're working and we are going to draw comparisons from our earlier go basics that we have learned from the official docs and then we are going to see how the best people in the industry are doing it what is the idiomatic way people write go code and why do i think this is the most important step while learning to write good go code these are some of my favorite quotes that express the emotion of why reading code is more important than writing it at least reading good code is more important than writing the first one says the software business is one of the few places where we teach people to write before we teach them to read right this is this is so true that I have seen it everywhere. People watch some YouTube tutorial or some Udemy course or they just go to the getting started section of the docs. They start from there and they just keep building on top of it and they keep building from different examples, different blogs, different places where the solution is readily available, where you can just copy and paste or you can just directly get inspired from and you just focus on the solution at hand or the problem at hand and you move on with that and that's how people learn to code over the years and it takes a long time right a very long time for people to get experience in writing good code and how do they learn it they learn it from code reviews looking at code from their colleagues and getting onboarded into different code bases that's how people learn to write good code over the years and some of them never do right? because they never get to see good code because they never got good code reviews or they always got onboarded into bad code bases it is possible i have seen people who have never even seen good code forget about writing good code so we want to avoid exactly that before we start writing before we start writing our actual code for our project of course we will write some code while we are learning basics just to understand the concepts but before we start building things like actual useful things we will read a lot of we'll read a lot of good code idiomatic code so that we can avoid that mistake the second one is code is read many more times than it is written and this is very relatable because as a developer you write some code write some code and raise the pr and that gets merged and the feature is on production right and after that point you change that code if 
let's say there is some bug or the requirements change etc etc but after that point from that code getting merged that code is read many 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 more times by you and your colleagues and your manager or people who write tests from a lot of different people so the point here is you cannot get away with writing bad code because you think the deadline is approaching and you have to ship this feature so you write some random code that just works but it looks very bad it is not idiomatic or it might have bugs etc etc and you might get away with it because of the deadline the code gets merged but that code will be read by a lot of people by you and it will cause issues it will cause readability issues it will cause bugs it will cause maintenance issues and a lot of issues because the code is read many more times than it is written right the reading part happens way more frequently and it is more important than writing it and the last one is programming is among other things a kind of writing and one way to learn writing is to write but in all other forms of writing one also reads we read examples of both good and bad to facilitate learning but how many programmers learn to write programs by reading programs and this is a question you can ask yourself when was the last time you read code just for the sake of it just for reading code just to like soak it in just to absorb all the good practices or the good style of that code you know just reading code for the sake of reading code when was the last time you did it in all the other forms of writing whether it is writing books or writing blogs or any kind of creative writing you will notice that people who write good books or people who write great blogs they are the people who have a habit of reading right they have read from a lot of people they have read a lot of content and they have read a lot of good content and bad content and over the years they have developed their own style of writing from reading all those good content people who are good at writing they are also good at reading right so as a programmer if you don't dedicate a certain amount of your time to read code it is impossible it is very difficult to get good at writing good code if you don't read good code if you don't look at good code you don't know what is the extent of efficiency what is the extent of readability or optimizations or any good standards of code that you can push yourself to you are stuck in that same code base you're stuck with the same people and that's where you will get stuck for a long amount of time but the good news is as developer we have this awesome platform called github github is the platform where you will find thousands and millions of code bases from all different languages open source code bases where people like the top 1% of the developers you know the 100x engineers they write code in the open they write code and just push it you can go there and you can read their code and you can even steal their code use it in your own code bases right you can do that no one is stopping you and while you are stealing their code of course you will also learn why is that code better than yours right so the point is we have this awesome platform where it just takes a few seconds to go there and find the top quality code that i don't think we fully utilize that's what we are going to do in the second step that's the whole idea in the first step we'll we'll learn go from the official docs in the second step we'll go to github we'll pick some very good open source code bases and we'll just dive deep we'll look at the project structure we'll read the code we'll see what are the good practices what is what how are people building server related stuff what are the different types of implementations what is the good idiomatic go code to maintain in a production style code base and everything right we'll dedicate a lot of time to read code and also from my experience i'll share how what is the fastest way to get into open source code base understand where are all the useful stuff are what are the parts to focus on what are the parts you can steal from and all the tips and tricks that i have learned over the years by learning open source code bases myself that is about the second step the third step where we actually build projects not just any crud apis we will build projects end to end right we will follow all the best practices we'll assume from the start that it is a production grade project it is going to have tens of thousands of users and we cannot cut corners in any of the areas that is going to be the aim unlike other tutorials where you will frequently hear that in this tutorial we are going to do this but in a production grade project you are going to do things differently you will never hear this in this series from the start only we'll build things in production style we'll do things exactly like people are doing in github are building projects from in top companies so that you don't learn anti patterns right from the start you learn how to write good code 
how to write maintainable code how to write efficient code and how to ship efficient code like you do exactly in a production environment and all the concept that i am already doing in the back end from first principles you'll also see this in these projects right stuff like production grade authentication and structured logging and best practices during validation and graceful shutdown how to deploy stuff to cloud using docker how to have vict pipelines and how to have zero downtime deployment everything right everything that happens in companies startup actually production environments will do all those things we won't cut corners anywhere that is my promise it is going to take a lot of effort but by the end of this series you will come out as a great engineer that people can look up to you will learn how to read code how to read good code how to be a great engineer who has a very good understanding of the official docs you know that is a most important step as an engineer an engineer who has read many 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 good code bases who has an understanding that what people from the top of the industry are doing what is the idiomatic way of doing anything and everything in go and then building and shipping end to end project from starting from scratch to deployment in a production style engineers that we need more in numbers of in these times of ais where everyone is just focusing on shipping fast and shipping whatever the ai tool spits out an engineer who has a very good foundation and a very good experience in reading stuff and building stuff basically someone with a comprehensive knowledge about all the tools and the language to work on so see you in the next video where we dive deep into the go basics from the official docs